Hey everybody, I decided to do a airdata.com tutorial. So all you do is you type in airdata.com, register your account. It's pretty easy, it's all free. Just type in your first, last name, your email address, choose your password, accept the terms, blah blah blah. I'm already registered, so I'm not going to do it. And then I just keep myself logged in. I ended up buying a one year package, but um, the only th advantage it gave me, as far as I know, is I can see wind maps. I mean, there might be other features, but I haven't looked into it. So I just go to my flights. Um, this is, of course, after you have uploaded your flights. Okay, so just go to the Play Store, type in Air Data, UAV right there. I've already installed it, but here's where you install it. Um, just if you're on Apple, go to the Apple Store. I have an iPad too, so I have it on there also. One thing about Apple's version though is it just uploads your flights. So this tells me if it's good to fly or not. Um, this is also where I sync all my flights. My sync has started. Sync done, no new files, okay. You can look at your flights here. But in order for this app to work properly and for you to see your flights on the actual website, you need to make sure that you're up to date with DGI because this is all based off your DGI account so basically it walks you through how to upload your flights and then once you've uploaded them through the app you can then go to airdata.com and look at all the detailed information of your flights <clears throat> go over here to my logs these are all my flights I'll click on this one okay so from this screen gives you the overview of the flight total mileage max distance max altitude maximum speed maximum battery temperature landing battery percentage what drone you're flying I forget how many drones you can have I think it's like three or four in the free account your flight airtime and from here you can go right down your list power this is a big one because you can look at all these different features to see how your batteries are doing um, like if you read the details here basically if you're in the green you're okay lower numbers are better it tells you how to read these graphs Volts and amps, green is good. There's a little gauge up here telling you what's bad and what's good. More battery info, temperature over time. So if you have a bad battery, this site will help you figure that out. I like this feature because I can see how good my connection was. This is your sensors. And green is good once again. You can even zoom in, click on one of these. Point G, flight time, three minutes. It tells you the exact, your altitude, calculated signal is 100%. So if you fly in one area and you keep getting disconnected, this will help you to determine which area in that area is worse than others. So orange is good here. As far as GPS goes, green is excellent. So apparently I didn't have the greatest signal through here. I was down below the freeway, so. Compass, 10.5, that's pretty good. No issues were found. 
looking for a rate of change in the cup is 25 degrees or more per second. So that's about 90 degree turn a third of a second, which is not normal. All right, so it'll tell you if you have a bad compass. Um, come into controls, rudder average response time, maximum response time, which in this case, it doesn't look that great. <laughs> come down here it tells you what to look at for the gauge how good your response time is um, so this might mean you need to calibrate your controller which I haven't done in a while so I probably need to do that your rudder map green is obviously good red is slow so let's look at that slow one Point F, four minutes into the flight, altitude 60 feet, right turn, right turn response time is 0.9 seconds, as compared to B, which is 0.4 seconds. So for whatever reason, in this case, I think it had to do with wind. So I could prove that in weather. Um, visibility, excellent. 52, it's finally warming up up here. Let's cruise through here real quick. KP index. It's great that day. Maximum gust speed, speed 11.3. So maximum gust speed wasn't really that high. So this is the only thing I get that you don't get with the free plan. And that's the wind map. It'll show you exactly where the wind's blowing. The range of speed you can click on it too wind speed 7.23 miles an hour which is kind of cool because you might not have realized that you had a wind issue i don't necessarily rely on the warnings let's fly in the mavic mini here but like say you're doing range tests or something if you've got really high wind speeds that's going to affect your range tests this really breaks it down for you I'm not even gonna go into that no media found okay so you can upload pictures here and that's all with the free account I'm pretty sure map there's the map change your view but let's go back to general here's the other cool thing if you click on warnings down here it says I had 19 warnings so it's got this little deal called the HD flight player you can click on it and hit play and right down here in this area it'll tell you everything that went on including warnings so I'm just gonna hit play high altitude that says it everywhere I fly Tells me my GPS, my satellites, battery percentage, volts, uh, blah, 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 flight time, flight mode. Like one of my range tests I did kept changing flight modes for some reason. I never pushed the button, so I'm not sure why that happened. Um, tells you barometer altitude and sonar altitude. It also shows you your stick movement up here. I mean, let's zoom in, come down here, see what E, mode change to P, GPS, so I must have been changing modes. High altitude aircraft braking distance increase, and flight time decrease. Okay, so the thin air up here causes a decreased flight time, so I'll never quite be able to do a range test like somebody who lives down south it'll give you the details of where you were the flight distance all that all the notifications it'll break that down for you a larger map you can blow this thing up huge so my favorite thing to look at is sensors and power like 
miles per battery this is 1.76 miles per battery so i don't know if my batteries are getting weaker over time but back when i first started using this website it was saying i had like six miles per battery so anyways basically that's it it stores up to 100 flights with the free program i hope you enjoyed the video and if you have any free time go check out the website find out a lot of interesting facts about your drone flights. Thanks for watching.